I begged Cronenberg to do Naked Lunch. I grew up with Naked Lunch. I'm a product of the 60s. I am an aging, acid head, earringed, old hippie, you know, sort of wannabe freak who also dated sorority girls. So, you know, I, you know, I was trying to do the best of both worlds. But Naked Lunch was a profound influence on me. There's no satirical books as Gulliver's Travels like it. It, it was prescient to, it predicted AIDS, it predicted crack cocaine, you know, it predicted liposuction. I mean, he says in there, he wrote in 1958, women in Beverly Hills will be standing in line to have fat sucked out of them with tubes. That's in 58, bro. You know, there's a homosexual African disease that will insinuate itself into the white commercial market and make worldwide panic. Uh, it's an astounding <laughs> book, man. And also the phrasing in it and so forth. The phrase I said before was I'm going to open up this paper on Tuesday at UCLA. I did tell you guys that. Yes. I'm not going to do that, though, because that's not going to work. But Burroughs I spent also six months, six months with. And I, I, I'd asked Cronenberg. I wrote him a letter. I saw his advertisement was in Cannes. I was there to pro promote Robocop 2. I, I wrote him a letter that said, if you don't have Bill Lee cast, this is my Bible. And he called me up and said, uh, I will come to New York, well, let's talk, and that's the rest of its history. And then I met Burroughs, and we had phenomenal time, and I was with Burroughs for a while, and we'll have to make a movie before it came back. So Burroughs talks in a monotone. You see Drugstore Cowboy? He's, it's one of the great performances ever, him and Matt Dillon. Also, you know, that thing he wrote at the end of Drugstore Cowboy, he wrote it. That's not Gus Van Zandt. That's Bill Burroughs and his particular click into the metaphors of hypocrisy in the world. So once you talk, once you're listening to Burroughs for about eight hours, then you're going to start talking like Bill Burroughs because that's exactly how he talks. <laughs> and he talks very wryly. And I want to give you something about what balls Bill Burroughs had. There's the, you know, I went to New York and the, immediately about three weeks after I was in New York was the Stonewall. You know what Stonewall is? All you homophobes. Then you pick up a book and read something, for Christ's sake. So that's what I'm telling you. My tenor player, man, didn't even know there was a stone wall. He didn't even know that gays... When I went to New York, if you held hands in your same sex, the cops busted you, man, and hit you. They raided you and knocked you down for holding hands. And that was in 72, man. And you go to the theater place, and there were a couple of pockets like Jimmy Ray's in the theater bar where gays could kind of sit women and men you know by themselves and like hold hands but they'd have to watch the door because the vice cops with this isn't this sick I mean what were we under a fucking rock in any case Burroughs and another guy named Pier Paolo Pasolini know who he is great social essayist poet filmmaker wrote scripts for Fellini was essentially assassinated by the Italian CIA. And another guy named Jean Genet, anybody know who he is? By the way, all of Sons of Anarchy, if you're watching that, is based on Jean Genet, Maid's Balcony, everything's the life of cockroaches. Yeah. Anybody know Jean Genet, what I'm talking about? Yeah. Tough, bald-headed, leather boy, punker, gay guy, who was, even after he was awarded the Academy Francais Prize, he was still walking in to dime stores stealing Kleenex. You know, and the guy that would bail him out was, um, who's the guy that did Beauty and the Beast? That's great. Jean Cocteau. Cocteau, yeah. Cocteau would bail him out of jail. And he, you know, the Perry Match said, you're worth a million dollars. Where are you going in this drugstore? And stealing his stuff for him. He said, force a habit. <laughs> okay, those three guys actually knew each other. And they, all, and they each called themselves, they weren't really great buddies, but Burroughs was very good friends with Janae. And an acquaintance of Pasolini, and they called themselves queer. Got it? Queer. Okay, in the levels of, if you go to education now, and if you go to college, and you study anything in the humanities whatsoever, history, language, anything, art history, you know, sociology, anything, there are different methodologies that you have to take a class in methodologies. Because it's so complex now, you have to study the black methodology, black American methodology, African methodology, you know, Euro-colonial methodology, Feminist methodology, you know, American, Mesoamerican, that's, that's how they look at history. You understand each one of these cultures look differently. Okay, when you're looking at homosocial methodology, which, by the way, you're in upper level education, you have to look at that methodology. 
It's not called gay theory, guys and girls. It's called queer theory. That's the methodology of homosociality in the world and homosexual relationships. It ain't called gay. It's called queer. After three guys who had huge ball, I mean, it's the 1950s, man. And you say I'm queer? You know, that made, that made people run for, you know, get their shotguns and stuff. And Burroughs, man, I never forget it. When a, when a, I had to come back to New York. I went down to New York for a, a, a board of something rather for a Playwrights Foundation. And I came back. We had to do an interview because all three American stations in the Canadian broadcasting were interviewing Burroughs and Cronenberg and me about the fact that this book was finally being made. It was the anniversary of Stonewall. And they said, Mr. Burroughs, uh, do you have anything to say about it's the week that is you know, emblemizing Stonewall, the riots in Manhattan that began the gay rights movement. And Bill Burrell said, I have never been part of any movement and I've never been, a, I've never been gay a day in my life. And then there was this deadbeat. And then the guy said, you're not gay. No, I am queer. And that's how Bill Burroughs talked. And it was never more emphatic than that. Nothing was ever more emphatic than that. I mean, you know, I, I, I just looked at Burroughs and I thought, what, what, I don't know, gifted guy, but incredible amount of courage. Money wasn't shot or something. Anyway, that's your homo, homosocial and s social studies lesson for today. <laughs>